There are people who like to put people down by criticizing them to make themselves feel better. But then there are also people who want to offer some fe someone feedback as a way of helping that person become even better. But sometimes we don't always know how to word our feedback in a constructive way. Today, I'm going to provide you with nine factors to keep in mind to provide constructive criticism. So let me get right into it. So nine factors to be mindful of when you give constructive feedback. One, think before you speak. Think about why you feel the need to share your feedback. If it's coming from a good place in that you want to help, let's say an athlete's performance, think of how you would want the information communicated to you. So approach makes a big difference. Stay factual to avoid an emotional confrontation. Ensure you allow time for the other person to respond, to allow time for clarification and communication back and forth. That will increase the chances of a positive outcome. Number two, check your emotions. So what I mean by this is to consider or like take an inventory of your emotional state before delivering your criticism. Are you feeling angry or anxious? If so, you may be initiating an attack that could backfire. So take some time to understand how the feedback you need to deliver impacts you personally. Next, consider how that feedback will impact the receiver. Third, give a warning. In that respect, you're preparing the recipient for feedback, such as saying, I need to tell you something that may be hard for you to hear. Would that be okay? Or can I give you feedback? Number four, proper framing. What I mean by this is to frame your feedback that focuses on the change that needs to be made to benefit that person. So rather than point out a person's faults, you can phrase the suggested changes as opportunities for growth. And this can be done without resorting to accusations or making any kind of derogatory comments. So rather than telling them that they're irresponsible, provide dates when they showed up late for a training session, for example. Let's say in a group sport example, rather than telling them that they need to be more of a quote unquote team player, explain the specific behavior that you expect from them as let's say their coach. Remember that the intention of constructive criticism is to build and strengthen a person, not tear them down. Focusing on the behavior rather than the person keeps your conversation focused and on topic. I'll give you an example. So rather than saying, let's say for a bodybuilder, you didn't prep properly for your show, say, I know you trained hard and stayed on your diet and your hard work may have translated a little better on stage with using a posing coach. Also, be mindful that if your athlete bodybuilding client didn't present their best on stage, it doesn't mean they weren't disciplined. Sometimes it's the stress up that they were feeling may have contributed to holding a film of water on their physique. Hence, that affected their ability to present their best on stage. Number five, location, location, location. That's said in real estate, but it can be applied to giving feedback as well. The general rule is you praise people in public but you criticize constructively in private. Number six, use balance. Telling the truth without blame or judgment. So you can briefly start with outlining what behaviors they're doing that's actually working, it's in their favor. Then you can add on behaviors of what they could to try to become better. Number seven, face to face. The most effective approach for delivering constructive feedback is in person, not email or text or online chat or anything to that effect. Now, sometimes giving feedback in person is not feasible. So in that case, a video chat like Google Meet or Zoom can be helpful. Also by scheduling the meeting. So be clear about your discussion points so the recipient can also prepare in advance. Remember, a feedback session is not an inquisition, but rather a discussion. Number eight, provide solutions. Constructive feedback should inspire change. Make specific suggestions for better results, such as using a particular mental game coach. Give examples of how you 
or maybe others you know have had similar issues as the recipient of your message and they got positive results, let's say with that mental game coach. Number nine, be open to criticism yourself. It's a good practice to know what it's like to be on the receiving end. Having empathy allows you to better choose your words and your tone when delivering your feedback. It also helps you learn about yourself. You can make adjustments so you can learn how to continue to improve yourself as well as your delivery on how you can help others improve themselves. Accepting criticism is an art. It requires the ability to listen, ask questions, and develop trust. Now, unfortunately, not all constructive criticism is actually constructive. Framing and delivering your feedback the wrong way can make the recipient feel personally attacked, which only leads to defensiveness, hurt feelings, and ultimately demotivation. And of course, it can actually impact your friendship too. By practicing the art of delivering constructive criticism with careful thought, balance, recipient-focused intention, empathy, focused behavior, action-oriented suggestions and positivity, well, you not only empower the recipient, but yourself by honing your craft of delivering and receiving constructive criticism. If you've learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below of what resonated with you. I also have another video I want you to watch. It's called How to Deal with Constructive Criticism. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Take care and remember to keep your mental game on.